Uh, he's going to tell us about himself, what he does, his story, and we'll move from there for this interview. Welcome, Michael, and thank you for your time to joining me on my birthday. <laughs> Nadei, I got to tell you, this is really exciting to be here on this very momentous occasion, <laughs> your birthday. I mean, you could have invited anyone on the show, <laughs> and somehow I was lucky enough to be one of the guests. So thank you for having me be a part of the birthday show. And thank you for joining me. <laughs> it's a pleasure. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. So I do mindset coaching. And mm -hmm. I want to give you a little bit of a background of, you know, how I got into that. So if, a, a number of years ago, I was going through a divorce. I had to move out of the house and I lost my job all at the same time. So... Mm -hmm. My brother put it perfectly. He said, you know, those are the three biggest stressors in life. And you got hit with all three of them at the same time. Wow. Now, I had been in personal development since I was 10 years old. Uh, my parents were very spiritual and they were into communication and effective communication. And they actually got me started out at a very young age, uh, which was terrific. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, when I went through this issue, I mean, that was a big impact mentally. So I accidentally bumped into, and I say accidentally in quotes, because I believe that everything in life happens for a reason and purpose. And it was a oh. it, it was just perfect that I found this course that I did. Um, and it was a six month course. And it was all about the mindset. And it was about looking within ourselves to find all of the answers and stop looking outside, right? Isn't it always easy to point the finger outside and look for the answers outside of us? Cool. So, <laughs> so what I learned was to, again, look within. And I did this course, and the course literally changed my life. And again, I had done a lot of courses uh, up until that point. Um, so, so what I decided to do is after I came out of the, you know, the course that I did and my life had changed for the better and I actually had built a six figure income in a financial advisory practice, like things were really good. I, I met someone that I really love and, and who's now my wife. Um, all these things had changed. And I said to myself, you know, I would really love to be able to teach other people like what I learned. So mm -hmm. I went back and asked them, is there something that I can do to be able to teach this to others? And there was a certification, which mm -hmm. I took, and it took me about two and a half years to get it. And uh, now I actually left my financial practice a while back. And this is what I do uh, for a living. And I love it. You know, it's funny, I spent 40 plus years of my life doing something that I didn't truly love. And now I wake up and I love what I do. I love helping That's people. Awesome. I love, yeah, right? It's, it's an amazing yeah. feeling. So in a nutshell, that's my story. That's awesome. It's like not going to work every day. It's just enjoying what you're doing. That's exactly right. You wake up and, and, and I could work on this all day up until two, you know, till midnight tonight. And, and I would feel as if, you know, I'm ready to go and do more because that's really the key is, and it took me so long to figure it out, but I finally did, which is do what you love. Oh, I love that idea. Yeah. So what's, what's your motivation? right now regarding COVID-19 and the self-isolation and quarantine? Right, so this is, this is a, obviously a, a, a situation which has touched many lives in many different ways. Obviously, there are people that have family members that have been impacted and that is, is not an easy thing to deal with. Um, sure. But there, there are a few things that I think are really important to do. Um, there's one thing that I highly, highly recommend, and I, I know it's important to, to get the news 
uh, from, you know, and, and to listen and hear what's going on out there. However, what I found is that so many people are spending hour after hour after hour listening to the news, getting alerts on their phone, and mm -hmm. they're, they're so anxious and nervous um, because, again, anything you focus on long enough, that's what you'll get. So one of the major pieces of advice that I would give to anyone is if you're going to watch the news, just mm -hmm. do it in moderation. Maybe take an hour out at the end of the day or a half an hour, catch up on the news, get the stories and then turn it off. Because, um, again, it has an impact on our mindset and our overall feeling that we have and walk around with more uh, specific anxiety and that leads mm -hmm. to depression as well just from watching this all the time so you would recommend to have like in the morning or in the evening one hour of news and that's it yeah i would really recommend it's like going on a diet from the news because it really does have an impact right so maybe spread it out maybe do a half an hour in the morning then mm -hmm. stop And then if you want, get another half an hour in the evening. Um, because if you, again, if you spend too much time on the news, you're going to feel it. Uh, I'll give you a great story. My, my wife, Yvette, and I, we both don't watch the news. Now, we may be pushing it a little, right? And because people will say to us, well, how do you get your news? And the truth mm -hmm. is for us, when when something major happens, we always are told by someone. A br my brother will call a family member, a friend. And so I'll mm -hmm. get the news. Um, however, so, so we're on that diet. Now that's a real diet. Like we don't watch yeah. any of this, right? <laughs> <It's> drastic. <laughs> yeah, that it is drastic, but I will tell you yeah. that I feel fantastic. You know what I mean? Like, I know all this stuff's going on and I know that people are being impacted and I'm sending prayers and love to everyone mm -hmm. who's being impacted by it, mm -hmm. but it's not impacting me um, and, and my and my state. And so I do that on purpose. Um, but but this is the story. She, she again, she doesn't watch the news either, but she has the Apple watch and mm -hmm. She didn't realize, but um, she can't, she comes into the house one day and she's all nervous and anxious. And it was very unlike her. And I, I was like, what's going on? You know, what, what's, why are you feeling this way? And then we hear a ding on the watch and then another ding. And she looks down <laughs> and it's a CNN headline of like mm -hmm. something that was happening with the virus. Yeah. And, and I said to her, have you been looking at those all day? And she said, yeah. I said, and how are you feeling? And she said, I don't feel too good. I said, That's why I don't wear it today. I'm without my watch. <laughs> Me too. Right. You're better off without it. Um, so, so, yeah, I mean, that's a perfect example. Here she is, normally not impacted or affected by it. She has the watch. All she's getting are alert. She looks at them, and she was so anxious. And then she yeah. turned them off, and by the next day, She was like, you know, again, because she wasn't focused, it wasn't coming at her nonstop. She felt terrific. So that's a really, really big suggestion that I have for everyone out there. That's awesome. And what do you think about the non-believers or the people reluctant to any coaching or, or coaching itself? Uh, for them, it doesn't mean anything. Okay, that's a great question. And I get that question all of the time. So this is the example I always give is imagine going to the gym to work out, right? It's New Year's. It's New Year's Eve. You say to yourself, okay, for the next six months, I'm going to get into the best shape of my life. And so you go to the gym the first day and you do a good workout and you feel good. You're sore. You know, everything went really well. You go a second and third day on the fourth day you start to get like, well, I'm getting really, I don't really feel like going to the gym today. Mm -hmm. And then you get in the gym and, you know, you take a little extra time getting water. You might even have to go to the bathroom. 
And then you talk to a few people that you know at the gym. And then you do a couple exercises, but clearly you're not working out nearly as hard as you were before. Yeah. So what, what, what a coach does is they hold you accountable. They hold you accountable for your commitment and your goal. Because it's wonderful to be able to do it on our own. Mm -hmm. And it's great if you can do it on your own. But unfortunately, the studies show clearly that people are much more effective when they have someone that they're accountable to. And that's what I do is I hold people accountable in a very nice and loving, caring way. But at the same time, they know if they don't do it, they're going to hear from me. And again, mm -hmm. it's for their best interest. So I think that's, you know, again, that's. Yeah, really ahead. not believers how do you explain uh, to someone who may need a coach but doesn't know that they need a coach that's a okay, great question so here's how you know you need a coach if you are getting the same results in your life over and over and over again and these are results that you're not really happy with Like I give you an example, let's say we'll just use a job and you want your income. Let's say you have your own business and you want your income to increase every single year and grow and take yourself to the next level. But over the past five years, your income has been pretty much the same. Or you want to get into a better relationship with someone. But you keep finding the same people over and over. And they're people that are not really good for you as a person. That's an indication that you need to have some guidance and some, some support and some growth and some accountability to help guide you down the right path. Think of Michael Jordan, right? Mm -hmm. One of the best basketball players of all time. How could he have done it without a coach, right? The coach oh. worked him, guided him, got him into meditation. You know, Phil Jackson, they, they, used, to, they used to do meditation and visualization in the, um, you know, in the locker room and before practice. Mm -hmm. They would actually visualize themselves shooting the basket and, and mm -hmm. seeing whether or not it would go. I'm, not, I'm sorry, in their mind, they were seeing it go in every single time. They would see it over and over. They, they did this also with Olympic um, people that were preparing for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. They had them, uh, the weightlifters, they had them lift the weights in their mind versus other weightlifters who were actually doing the weightlifting. And believe it or not, the people that were also doing the visualization actually increased their weights that they could lift by, it was a significant amount. It was like by 20% of wow, what the other impressive. people, right? So it's wonderful to think that we can do it on our own. And I'm not saying you can't, there are people that can do it, but to have guidance, to have support and to have that little push that you need to do the right things that you need to do for your life. And not only that, sometimes, the coach will tell you something that you mm -hmm. just didn't think about. And now all of a sudden you have that aha moment that Oprah always says, that aha. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and then all of a sudden your life changes because of that one thing that that coach or someone in your life that's been supportive of you, they said to you. And now it just, you saw it from a different light or a different perspective. Uh, it triggered you and you have a better result. Exactly right. Dev, better results. Um, it, coaching works. Um, it, sometimes another thing is it's hard for some people to admit, like they feel like if they get a coach, then they're not good enough or they're giving mm. up their power. And I would it's a say destruction to, idea. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I would say to that person, actually, it's the, it's quite the opposite. You're just using someone else who may have some different information or knowledge to guide you in a way mm -hmm. you just may not know. Yeah. And, and, and so does that answer your question? Yes, it does. <laughs> good. Okay, good. Yeah, I get that. I get asked that a lot. 
Yeah, it's uh, because I heard people saying, no, I have a high IQ. Uh, I don't need a coach um, or things like it's a waste of money. Uh, I heard a lot of stuff like that. So it's kind of recurrent. That's why I wanted to insist on that part to make sure things are clear. You need a coach. That doesn't mean you are not a good athlete, like you mentioned, Jordan. He's a good exactly. athlete, but he needs somebody to make him improve what he has and get a better result. Doesn't mean he's bad at the beginning. So doesn't mean he's going to have any self destruction idea. It's just, it's going to improve what you already have. So it's plus. If That's so true. So, so true. And you know, it's interesting. Michael Jordan's high school coach. See, mm -hmm. this is the, this is why you have to find a coach that's right for you. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan's high school coach essentially cut him from the team and said he was just not a good basketball player and he shouldn't be playing the sport. Now, wow. <laughs> can you, can you right. Isn't that amazing? Now, can you imagine yeah. if Michael Jordan would have listened to that coach and, and said, uh, we would never have a Michael Jordan by now. <laughs> and he's a superstar, right? But yeah. he, got the right, he got in front of the right coach. And again, that's key because there are a lot of coaches that are out there. Um, I think the key is looking for someone who has been through uh, a hard situation and has come out on the other side very successful through that type mm -hmm. of coaching. Um, and has lived has lived it, you know, because now they're not just talking from something that they learned in a book, but they're talking from experience and they're talking from the heart and they, mm -hmm. you know, to, to guide you down the right path because they know what happened for them and they want to see the same thing happen for you. Cool. And how do you manage with, uh, really, like, I don't know if you already had customer or, um, or coach that were reluctant. How did you manage? I, well, I'm sorry. What was the, the, the last thing you did said? Did you have some coach that were reluctant, not oh, willing reluctant. to be coached? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. There is always, you know, when people first start out, sometimes not all some are really ready to go and and they're but but mm -hmm. then there's others who will come and they're reluctant and they'll be like i don't know if this is really going to matter mm -hmm. or if this is really going to work i'll give you a great great example i i always think examples really are the best because that's how you can learn you know from mm -hmm. a specific example so i there's someone in my life that i'm very close with and that mm -hmm. person was suffering with anxiety really mm -hmm. bad so bad that oh. it would literally keep her in her chair kind of hunched oh. over shaking mm -hmm. she went to a psychiatrist she went to a therapist she went to get um uh a medication she did hip hypnotherapy and none of wow. it worked and 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 so so clearly she, you know, when I started to work and I had been telling her all along, listen, it's all in the mindset. It's all inside. And until you start looking within and working on that piece, mm -hmm. it's not going to change. The medication may numb you and temporarily make you feel numb, but it certainly isn't going to fix the root cause of the problem. So, oh. so again, so, so, so this person was very reluctant, like, Listen, I've tried it. I went to the doctor who can prescribe medication, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I, I, I understand. So I took her through the program and she started to look inside. And what she was lacking was she had given up her own power um, to someone that she had lived with. So in other words, she felt like whenever she wanted an answer for anything, she would ask either that person or other people. And when she started relying on herself and all the answers that were within herself, all mm -hmm. this power started coming back to her. And that anxiety, see, it was funny because if you think of anxiety and someone shaking, right, mm -hmm. from the anxiety, she was just shaking to get out and escape from that you know, giving up all her power to everyone else other than herself. So that's a perfect example of someone that was reluctant, who mm -hmm. in the end 
saw a change that no one else could do for her, which was truly amazing. Although and what I honestly, the, uh, you know, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was asking, uh, what was her trigger? What made her realize that she needed it? That she needed the coaching? Yes. Yeah, so I think this happens for a lot of people. They get to a point where they've hit the bottom and now mm -hmm. they're actually searching for an answer. Um, and so that in her case, that was where she was at. She just was willing to try anything that she could to stop feeling so anxious. And what I think that's a lesson because had she done that sooner and had she just trusted in the process of coaching, mm -hmm. she would have gotten through that in a faster manner. But look, everything happens in the way it's supposed to, but maybe someone that's watching this right now might say, you know what? I don't want to hit bottom. I don't mm -hmm. want to hit that place. I want to take care of this and I want to, I want to do this now and I want to coach now and I want to, I want to break through this now. And, and so sometimes we learn through other people's experiences. And what's the main challenge when it comes to those people resistant? The main challenge is um for example well, yeah. somebody who needs to quit smoking yeah. or someone who's having uh, the attitude of self-destruction or someone who's uh, who needs to stop procrastinating and the last one is somebody who's not easily influenced excellent question so I, when you first asked i wasn't 100 percent. now i know what you mean okay yeah. so there is a root cause to just about everything in life whether it's the mm -hmm. smoking or well, any of the issues that you just mentioned, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And it is called a paradigm. And a okay. paradigm is a big word for belief system. So are, we have habitual behavior that we do mm -hmm. that is based on our belief system. And that belief system was created when we were little kids. So let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. You have a child that's in school and mm -hmm. the teacher says to the child at a young age, what's wrong with you? Why don't you understand this information? And the kid doesn't know how to process that information. So what they do is they accept whatever it is the teacher says as the truth. And that's what everyone does because we don't know that anything. questioning. Yeah, we don't really, we weren't taught to question anything. We we're, here's an adult, here's a teacher, they're smart, mm -hmm. they're a lot older than us, so we're gonna accept whatever they say is the truth. What happens is that paradigm, and I always put like a, fence, a fist clenched, that mm -hmm. paradigm gets created. And so the paradigm of I am not smart enough. Now, again, that's only one belief that's created. I'm using it in this example. Okay. That paradigm gets created. I am not smart enough. Now, guess what happens? Five years later, 10 years later, every time you take an action or you behave, that action is influenced by that belief of, I'm not smart enough. So you want to start your own business and you go to start the business and you start doing the things you need to do. And then something doesn't work out the way you want it to. And then you say, see, this confirms everything I was told all along. I am not smart enough to do this. And what happens? We give up the business or we fail or whatever, but we don't end up doing the things we want because of that paradigm that's there. So that paradigm, and again, the beautiful thing about the belief system or the paradigm mm -hmm. is we, it's not our fault. It's not our fault. That was told to us by many different people when we were little kids and we didn't know any better. We never had a school that taught us how to process information, how to think, mm -hmm. and how to handle these kind of things. So what do we cool. do? All these paradigms get created, these belief systems, 
and they're in control of everything we do. So if you know you want to um, uh, you want to go to the gym and work out, right? You know you want to do it. You know you want to eat healthy. You know you want to get in good shape. You know those things. And then you never do it, right? Or you start to do it, but then you never get... Most people, when they, they say, I've tried and tried, I just can't do it. And, and, and everyone will say, I don't know why I can't do it. That's the reason why. It's the paradigm. And that is the root cause of mm -hmm. everything. It blocks everything. So until we identify the paradigms, until we start breaking the paradigms apart, right? We break them apart. Until that happens, guess what? We, the same thing keeps happening over and over and over. The same and over. cycle over and over again. Because don't you know people that they do this? And listen, I did the same thing. Maybe you do. There are certain things that you do. We all are guilty of it. But yeah. there's a reason for it. And that's the key. The, 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 uh, most people will say, well, I never knew that. Why didn't anyone teach me that? Why didn't I ever <laughs> hear that before? That's, that's why that's the beauty of coaching, right? Because someone that has heard of it can now teach you, right? I call my business Mindset Mastery University for a reason right? It's the university that was never created. It was the school to teach <laughs> us how to think and how to process <laughs> this information. So finally, there is, a, there is a school that exists. It's mindset. Yeah, and you have also a Facebook group too. Yeah, yeah. A book, yeah, I have a book that I'm, well, so I'm working on a book right now. It's called Your Internal GPS, Your Automatic, Your Automated Guidance System for Success in Life. And what it's about is, and this all comes through the coaching, but everyone can, can, I think everyone can resonate with this. Did you ever have that gut feeling, you know, you know, you should do something and it's that quiet, peaceful voice inside tells you, it says, Nade, uh, do that thing. I really, th you know, this is a good thing for you. Mm -hmm. And then... What do we do? Sometimes we do it, but a lot of times that other voice- We don't listen, yeah. Yeah, the <laughs> other voice comes in and starts talking and it says, no, you can't do that. Why would you waste your time? And then what do we do? We stop. That guidance system, that gut feeling that we have inside, that voice within, that will provide the answer to any question you have in life. It will guide us exactly where we need to go. The issue for a lot of people is they can't even hear the voice. Um, yeah, or They lock it or, down. Yeah, they've blocked it with so much stuff from over the years that they kind of need a shovel to start digging the stuff <laughs> up, right? And you, you, you get, right? And then, and then suddenly you can see light from the dirt. And then, and then, then when we make that connection and we learn how to do it, we have this voice within and that power within, like that person that I had coached who had the anxiety, when she started realizing that she could look inside of herself and get all the answers, she was like, well, this is incredible. And you could see <laughs> the change, right? So that, that piece, that divinity, God, higher power, whatever you want to call it, is inside of all of us. There's no one that doesn't have that. The only thing is, again, it might be covered with dirt. And, and, and that's where the guidance comes to how to get and take the shovel and get rid of the dirt so we can actually, yeah. you know. And I have a, uh, something I was thinking, maybe silly, I don't know, but I feel like asking it. Yeah, please. Uh, I was wondering, if you listen too much to your gut, don't you think you have like overdose or burnout of gut? <laughs> so, so yeah, so that, that I hear, that's interesting that you say that. So there's a really important thing to do, right? There's, there's really two, there's two voices that you kind of hear in your inside. Mm -hmm. One is you just know it's a hundred percent right on. Like it's that gut, it's your gut feeling, you know, you just know that that's right. And then there's the other voice, 
which is the voice we do not want to listen to. That's us, our ego. The way you know that it's the wrong voice, it's us trying to control the situation, right? Stay I know in the, better. In your comfort right? yeah. zone, yeah. yeah. Stay in your comfort zone. Don't go out of it. It's good. Stay here. <laughs> Don't go outside the comfort zone today because if you do that, that might be pain and there could be problems. And so I'd rather stay really comfortable right here and not do it because God forbid I make a mistake and then what happens? Yeah. And this is the thing I, this leads me to another point, if I can. Failure. Yeah, sure. I hear so many people, they're like, I don't want to do that because what if I fail? And my answer to them is always the same thing, which is, it's impossible to fail if you do not give up. It's impossible to fail if you don't give up. So as long as we learn from that mistake, which we will call a failure, and we mm -hmm. apply it in our life and we grow and learn from it, then you know what? It's not even close to a failure. It's a lesson learned. And if you yeah. look at famous failures, right? Um, Colonel Sanders, he, he, he wants to get his chicken recipe out for, for Kentucky Fried Chicken. And he mm -hmm. goes to 10 thousand people before he hears his first yes 10,000 <laughs> people i mean think about it. that's persistence but he, yeah. he he really stuck with it but he felt that his chicken recipe was the best chicken recipe out there and he he could have easily walked away and get, and gave up right at that first sign oh. of someone saying no and he no. could have looked at it as a failure but instead, he just kept learning. He kept going in. He kept doing it over and over and over. And he was persistence and per persistence pays off. It's not always easy to do. But there's millions of examples like that of people that were, you know, you would see, well, they failed. Um, have you ever heard, I don't know if you've heard of this, of Sponge Daddy? It's, a, it's this little sponge. It was on... Um, uh, Oh God, I can't think of the name of the show. But they, but they, but it, essentially, the the point is, this guy mm -hmm. made a sponge. And what's great about it is, if you run it under cold water, it gets very hard. So you you know you can kind of scrub something off of a of a pan. But mm -hmm. if you run it under warm wa water, it gets really soft like a regular sponge. Well, oh. this is the yeah, this is the great <laughs> thing about that story. I know him. He lives in my town. And now he's mm -hmm. a multimillionaire. And, and, and here's how it worked. That thing, that sponge, was some other thing that he was working on that sat in his garage for years. And then he went back mm -hmm. and took it out and started just playing around with something and then realized, well, when I run it under cold water, it's doing this and hot. And then boom, that gut, wow. that gut says to him, Wait a second. Go for it. This is go, go for it. And now he's a multimillionaire. Um, gosh, I can't think of the show, but you would know it. It's it's on TV. Um, Damon Damon. Uh, ah, it doesn't matter. But he but he doesn't became matter. a multimillionaire from it, which is incredible. Shark Tank. And how That's do you? Oh, okay. And how do you motivate someone for success? How do you motivate? So so right. So my goal is to get them through this whole process of going within and breaking up their paradigms to teach them how to do it themselves. Because once they know, once they get the, the power to do it on their own, in fact, if I, if someone's stuck with me forever, that's a bad thing. Like you don't, you don't, like sometimes you'll go to a therapist, you could be there for six years because they'll, mm -hmm. the therapist will sit, or more. The therapist will sit back, and I'm not saying anything bad about a therapist, but a therapist will sit there and say, Nade, I understand how you feel. That must be hard. Tell me more about it. <laughs> how, how does that make you feel? And so you talk. Not give it at all. <laughs> right, but you don't get anywhere. Nothing ever gets solved. So, um, you know, it, when you go within and you do the work, Ultimately, you learn how to do the process on your own so you don't need to have a coach. 
you could always do like um, maintenance, right? You meet with a coach mm -hmm. every few months just to make sure you're on track. But the point is, after a period of time, you shouldn't need to have someone always telling you how to do it. You really want to learn how to do it on your own. And that's what I teach other people to do. I want them to become powerful. I don't want them to rely on me. I want I want them to learn and grow from me and then use it their own uh, on their own to grow and become the strong and an and, and incredible person that they already are. But they just don't know yet because it's buried with all that dirt. That's awesome. And could you tell us about your relationship with your mentor? You were talking about Bob Proctor. Some yeah, so yeah. yeah, I will. I will. So Bob Proctor, he is he he Bob Proctor was in the movie The Secret, just in case you don't know who he is. He's the oldest. I don't know his name, but I watched the, the movie, so I know. Now that you right. mention it, I know. Yeah. He's in the documentary. He's the oldest person on the on the show, has white hair, he's dressed mm -hmm. in his suit. He always looks like top notch. He's he's just great. <laughs> But, but here's the beauty about Bob Proctor. So he was in the movie The Secret, um, and that's mm -hmm. where most people would know him from. Um, but the guy is 80. He's going to be 86 years old this year. Mm -hmm. He's a multimillionaire, probably a billionaire, actually. However, he says that he will never retire. He will do this work until he's no longer here on Earth. And by the way, he... <laughs> He already booked a place in Las Vegas for his 100th birthday, and he's only 85. <laughs> so that, that's his mindset. Like, I'm, I'm wow. getting it because I'm going to be around, and I'm going to celebrate my 100th birthday. And I believe him because the guy's got so much energy. He has more energy, you know, than, than people that are in their 20s. It's incredible. Um, wow. But I learned directly from him, mm -hmm. and he's taught me literally everything that I know. So, um, oh, and the beauty of Bob is he's, again, he's the oldest person alive in the personal development industry. He learned, if you've ever heard of Earl Nightingale, yes. Earl Nightingale, yeah, Nightingale Conant. So Nightingale Conant, they mm -hmm. became a publishing house for personal development books. Mm -hmm. Well, Bob Proctor learn directly from Earl Nightingale and Lloyd Conant, the two founders of that company. Yeah. And uh, Earl Nightingale and Lloyd Conant learned from Napoleon Hill, who wrote Think and Grow Rich in 1930. So yeah, I, I read one of his books. Isn't it great? <laughs> what did you think? Was it an amazing? It's amazing. I agree. It, it's amazing. And, and that, see, the beauty of that information is it dates back, you know, like over 100 years. So this isn't information that I said, Mike Fox just said, oh, listen, I came up with my, my own concept and I'm going to teach you all my concept. No, no. I'm taking information that's been around for 100 plus years that is that that works and is proven to work and that has worked for so many people. Um, you know, one of one of Bob's um, one of Bob's clients, direct clients that work directly with him. Mm -hmm. He's one of 25 people. It's either 25 or 35, something like that, that got an Oscar, a Tony. And mm -hmm. um, what's the third one? There's another one. There, the, but it's three of the awards. He got all three of them. And he's what did they see them? What's that? Caesar? No. The French one? No. no. Uh, he may have gotten that one too, but it's an American one. And I, I don't know why it's a, okay. it's a Tony, <laughs> a, not a Grammy. But anyway, he got three of the major awards, but he did that. He went to Bob and said, I want to get an Academy Award for, for what I do. And Bob <laughs> said, okay, you can get that. You just need to do the work. So that guy... <laughs> did the work and not only did he get the Academy Award, but he got the two others, which again, only a total of like 35 people in the world have that. So this stuff works, it's proven awesome. and, 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 and that's why I love it so much is because again, you know, it has a very long and extensive track record. Awesome. And do you have a thing that you would like to share with my audience, like a simple 
technique or something to do during this COVID-19, besides the fact that you have to avoid news every day? Yes. Is there a simple task or something they could learn from today? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay so I'll give a, do a couple of things. One mm -hmm. is gratitude. In all of the books, you know, there's a book called The Science of Getting Rich. I have it right over here. Um, that book, The Science of Getting Rich, was written before Think and Grow Rich. The Science of Getting Rich was written in 1915. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was a manual on how to create wealth and not just wealth in money, but wealth in relationships, wealth in happiness, all wealth across the board. But one of the beautiful things is you would think that a book with that title would be like the manual to get rich. And it'll be, well, you got to do this. You got to go out and sell. And you got one of the mm -hmm. chapters in that book is dedicated completely to gratitude. And I think that's amazing. Now, that dates back to 1915 or 1910. There's a writer in that area. Mm -hmm. So here's before the what, Titanic. <laughs> yeah, right. Even before. <laughs> yeah. So, um, here's what I would do with gratitude. So I, the reason I pointed it out, how far it dates back is because gratitude is such a powerful tool that we can use on a daily basis. So this is what I would do in the morning before you get started with your day, mm -hmm. take out a piece of paper and, or, or if you have a journal that you do on the computer, whatever, however you write it down, or if you put it on your phone, 10 mm -hmm. things that you're grateful for. And if you say to me, Mike, I can't come up with 10 things that I'm grateful for. I'm going to give you a list of 10 right now without even thinking. Okay. <laughs> I have okay. eyes that can see. <laughs> I have a mouth that can taste. I have ears that can hear. I have a nose that can smell. I have arms that work. I have legs that work. I have a brain that functions. Right. These are all things we take for granted until we have that accident where we, you know, break an arm and now we're without yeah. use of the arm. And we're like, oh, no, I didn't realize how much I used my arm before. <laughs> well, these are all things that we can be grateful for. And that's nothing. I mean, if you really think about it, like I have a roof over my head, I have water that I can drink, you know, from the I don't have COVID-19. I don't have COVID-19. <laughs> It's my birthday and I don't have COVID. It's my birthday. Right? I mean, how much better is that? Right. So, yeah. So focusing, starting off your day with gratitude and, and, and I would even argue finish it with gratitude as well is such a wonderful thing to do because you're waking up and starting on the right foot. And before you go to sleep, before you go into that dream mode where there's lots of things that are being processed from your day, you're mm -hmm. finishing it and you're getting ready to go to bed and you're going into that sleep, having thought of 10 things that you're grateful for. So those are two, th th well, that's one very easy thing to do, um, which can really have a significant impact on your day and on your life. And any time that you feel like, um, my life isn't working the way I want it to. Uh, why did that happen to me? That's when you pull out the gratitude sheet and start writing all the things you're grateful for, because that gratitude list will take you out of that feeling almost immediately and bring you into a feeling of, wow, you know what? I have so much that I can be really thankful for, you know? So that's one. Um, another one is, um, and this is hard for a lot of people, but I highly recommend it. It is be or when you wake up and you're doing your morning routine. So after you do gratitude, the next thing that I would do, and it only had to take two minutes for you to do it. Think of five people in your life that have been people that weren't so kind. Maybe they did things to you that weren't nice at all and you're angry or very hurt by them, this is what I say to do. For, send forgiveness and love to them. Now, that doesn't mean you have to pick up the phone and talk to them, 
But what you're doing is you're releasing the toxicity that you've been holding on to for all these years from yourself so that you let it go. It's like, imagine in my hand right here, I'm holding a hot coal and the hot coal is burning the skin on my hand. That hot coal is the anger that we hold on to. That anger inside of us burns a hole inside of us. So by sending the love and sending the forgiveness, what we're doing is we're letting go of the coal and we're stopping the burning from hurting us, right? Mm -hmm. I understand you might not want to go directly to that person and say, you know what, uh, I'm sending you love. I get it. Mm -hmm. But send it from your own place and your own house and they'll never know you're doing it. But what it will do is it will release that toxicity from you and you will feel a hundred times better by doing it. Not easy to do, but when you do it, you will feel incredible because it's uh, it, it's freeing because you're, you're a lot of people hold on to that stuff for years and it's a way to release it without having to actually go face to face with that person. I'm pretty sure it's going to be hard, but I think it's an, a great tip. If you are able to let go, it's a huge energy. You are burning into hating them and and being able to forget, forgive or maybe move on could be a good choice and use that energy into something else that you really want to do. I think it's a, it's a nice idea. It's a good synergy. Yeah, and it really does help. Again, it, it's not... You know, it, it would be different if I said to you in the day, go up to that person who punched you in the face and hurt you. Not not really punched you, but it mm -hmm. felt like they punched you in the face and give them forgiveness. You know, that I can understand. That's not an easy thing to do. That's a very high level person that can forgive. But what you can do is release it from yourself. So that's all I'm really saying, you know. Some people in the audience may say, well, I'm never going to forgive that person. They did something that's <laughs> yeah. unforgivable. But that's okay. You don't have to forgive them to their face. Just let it go from you. And that's really the key. And you'll free up energy for good things to come into your life. You know, you think of it as your body is storing all kinds of stuff. Well, if you have negative things in your body and you release the negativity, it makes room and space for the positivity in your life. I love that idea. Yeah. And how do you motivate your client to see things differently? So I think that just comes naturally because as they start to do the work, they start to get, it's really funny, you start to feel your body starts to tingle like because you're 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 tapping into this source inside of yourself that it has an abundant amount of energy i mean think think about a time in your life where you just had so much energy like you were really happy things were going so well and you mm -hmm. just felt amazing that is because most likely at that time in your life you were tapped into that source of you know that internal guidance and trusting and doing all the things that that guide had had said even though you may not have really heard it you were tapped mm -hmm. into that source and so when you're tapped into that source you know you're tapped in because the energy starts to flow like right now when i talk to you i'm pretty sure you can hear my passion and how mm -hmm. much i love this if that's oh. because i literally can feel my body tingling and like I get like so, like I'm ready to jump through the screen and give you a hug <laughs> your birthday, right? because, <laughs> because I just ha I've tapped into it and that's why I gave up that job and I'm like I want to get everyone tapped into this energy because it's there for everyone um and yeah. so that's I, again yeah, but it, my it question is with, yeah. more related to the fact that you know sometimes you could go to the museum together and mm -hmm. i could see this painting what i see would be completely different from my neighbor watching the same painting yeah so how do you make that person see what you're seeing maybe you see it more into a creative way or maybe you see it more into a technical way how do you make your customer see what you're seeing? Because at the beginning, they can't see where what you see from them. 
Well, I think, yeah, it's a good question. So everyone comes to it a little bit differently, but, but so like you'll see a painting and I'll see a painting and I'll see something that touches me and you may see something that touches you, but ultimately Mm -hmm. we still feel good after seeing that painting. It's kind of the Mm -hmm. same thing. Um, What, uh, wait, what was I going to say? Yeah. Okay. So we get, we get to that place by tapping when we figure out when we start to see and identify that belief system Mm -hmm. right everyone gets to seeing the belief system in a different way but we Mm -hmm. do get to it but once you start to see that belief system and you start to see that you can actually first that it's not your fault that you have that belief system because there's so many people that walk around feeling like it's my fault you know i i i feel like i'm not good enough and I've always felt mm-hmm. that way. And that's my fault. It's not your fault. If you walk away from one thing today, just know that it's not your fault that you feel the way that you feel and the act the way that you act in a lot of different circumstances, especially if you're feeling like you're not good enough, you're not smart enough. Um, that was something that you were told when you were very young, which you Mm -hmm. ended up believing because you didn't have Mindset Mastery University or any school that would teach you how to think Mm -hmm. through it. Um, So again, I think it's in a coming full circle, it really comes down to identifying the paradigm, uh, identifying the belief system and starting to break it down. And each Mm -hmm. person does it a little bit differently and that's a process. And that's part of the teaching that, 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 that happens. But I've yet to see one person who hasn't been able to kind of break through that system. If, 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 the person, if the person does everything that I tell them to do work-wise and they do it, it works. Bob Proctor, my mentor, he says it perfectly. He said to me, he said to me, if you do everything that I tell you, everything, and that means... When I have, he t- let's say he tells me to do A, B, and C. And I say, <laughs> well, you know what? A and B sound good to me. But C, I'm going to do it a little bit differently because I know better, right? No, it doesn't work that way. You have to do it the way that he told me and I'm going to tell you. And if you do that, if you do the work, it works. It works. Listen, if a guy could win an Academy Award, a Tony and whatever the other award is, but if he could win <laughs> all three of them, which is like next to impossible to do, um, you know, you can do it too. And I didn't believe at first when I started this, I didn't believe I could do it. I didn't believe I was in a place where I didn't believe I could do it. And then I started. So how did you shift the non-believing position you had into becoming a believer? because I did it. I made a decision and I started to do the work and I committed to doing the work. I said to Bob, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do everything you said. And I listened to everything that he told me and I did it. And that's how I got to where I was. That's where the belief came because he essentially taught me in a, in a, in a, in a structured way and how to end up believing in myself and getting rid of the terrible belief systems that were created when we were younger. It's the, again, the issue is most people have no idea why they do what they do. They don't even, they have no, they couldn't tell you. They'll tell you what they want to do. And they'll tell you, I've tried it a million times, but they can't tell you why. The reason is the belief system, the paradigm. And until they break through that, their life will be exactly the same as it always has been. It's just the way that it works. That's really deep, but that's true. You have to go yeah. through the paradigm. Yeah. It's and how uh, we talk about how to motivate and uh, about the picture. So how do you help uh, your group? Like, because sometimes you have the mirroring system in the group. Like COVID-19, we have this global trauma where everybody's facing the same situation. Everybody's after PTSD. Uh, what do you think about the situation? Is it a global resilience we all have to develop after this uh, pandemic? Or is it something that everybody has to deal with like a, a singular uh, resilience? 
So I think that when we work on changing ourselves first, everything outside mm -hmm. of us begins to change. So you, y yes, we must do the work ourselves first. We can't expect that it's going to come from outside of us. However, while we're doing the work, and even now, right now, anyone, anyone could share kindness with another person. Someone could pick up the phone and call someone they know that is alone through this process and say, hey, I just wanted to call you and tell you that I love you, I miss you, I care about you, and I just wanted to let you know I was thinking about you. Can you imagine if everyone in the world did that? Like if everyone just woke up tomorrow and the first thing that they did was do an act of kindness. So we all have the power. And the thing is, people learn through example also. So if the, in the day you, you have this channel, you're bringing great things to it, you're, you're, you're showing them by example. And, and if we live our lives by example, then our family around us will start being influenced by it. And then people that they know will start being influenced by it. And then it has a ripple effect. And the next thing we know, it's gone pretty far out and someone else has in, been impacted by it. Have you, ever, have you ever been at a store and you open the door and you hold it open for the person that's coming in? And mm -hmm. it's interesting, you know, most of the time someone will say thank you and they appreciate it. And then, and then this is the thing that I always love to watch. And it happens 95% of the time. Um, that person, if someone else even is like 20 feet away or even 15 yards away uh, that's coming towards the store, they will sit there and hold the door for that next person. And the reason that they're doing that is because they just received and now they're giving to someone else the same thing. They may not even have known why they did it, but that's the reason. Like they just accepted kindness and now automatically they're giving it out to Keep someone else. Yeah. And that's so, so um, this COVID-19 forcing us all to come inside. And mm -hmm. I think what it also has done is given us an appreciation, right? Remember the arm was broken and we, yes. we, we lost functionality of the arm. Well, here we can't really get out and see people face to face. Imagine when this all gets opened back up, how much appreciation will be there to just go over and give someone a hug or, or just be in a group setting where you can talk to your friends and family, you know, instead of having to do like some kind of drive by where you're 25 feet away from them. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so little actions make a big difference and so i don't think we have to see it as we have to do this major act to change the world we just do these small acts every day and we live our life as we would want to see other people living it you, have, you, you ever hear people saying you know i wish that person was this way you know what the best yeah, way you hear it all the time. <laughs> right, you hear it all the time. It, the, the best way to get that person to be the way you want them to is you be that way on an even <laughs> higher level. Did you ever hear Michael Jackson's song, Man in the Mirror? Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make that change. <laughs> I mean, he couldn't have said it any better. If you yeah. want better in the world, change yourself first. If you're in a relationship, now again, some relationships are toxic and definitely you should be out of that relationship. However, mm -hmm. there are some relationships which are good, however, you know, but you're, you, you have battling, mm -hmm. you have arguments, but what you'll notice in almost, uh, in a lot of relationships, you'll see finger pointing. She always does this. I wish she would just change and do it this way. <laughs> You know the best way to get someone to do it? Change yourself. Change yourself. <laughs> if you be more of that person that you want them to be. And then all of a sudden, so, you'll see that naturally, that person might actually change on their own. And, get, and, and I've got one lesson for you. You want to walk away with an easy lesson here? If yeah. you think you're going to change someone outside of yourself, good luck. Let me know how that goes. <laughs> I can promise you you know, it's never going to happen. That would be like in the day flying 
all right now lifting up off the ground and flying wherever you know overseas on our own without an airplane there's a better likelihood of that happening than yeah. you changing someone but what's amazing is everyone always points the finger they're like no 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 you need that. to change right yeah so change what's yourself your best, what's your best memories in your profession best memory yeah the best memory for me is, again, uh, you know, the person who I talked about earlier who had the anxiety that was literally crippling to a point where they would sit in the chair and not move and be sh literally trembling. Um, to see that person up and, and, and talking to people and, and, and like feeling great and, and people commenting and saying, what, what happened to you? Because everyone got used to this person being a certain way. And now all of a sudden, so to me, anytime I make impacts like that, and even if it's a smaller change, it's just change. When I see that spark, that light get lit in someone else and that light come, to me, that's, that's what excites me. And that's why I could really run a marathon right now because I've got that much energy, you know, to do it because okay. I'm just... Keep it there. So my next, next question is your apotheosis, your culmination in your profession. <laughs> oh, wait, say, oh, I'm sorry, I missed the last... The, What's your culmination up. in your pro pro profession? The culmination, do, the apotheosis. What do I think is going to happen in the industry? No, your, uh, yourself, in your profession, what you've done, all the customers you ever had. What's your culmination? Oh. Oh, well, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm doing what we said earlier, which is I'm making a change one act at a time. And then but that what, person, which one is the highest one? The biggest, What's the highest peak. Yeah. The biggest change that I've seen. Yeah. That you experience in your profession. I think it was the anxiety because I never had someone that was crippled with, you know, fear to a point where they were stuck to a chair and couldn't move. But that just goes to show you what tapping into that light inside of us does. It gives us that birthday energy that you have on your face. <laughs> yeah. Yes, happy birthday. This is so exciting. I, I can't, I'm so, I would sing you happy birthday, but my voice just isn't that great. <laughs> but so yeah, that to me was the biggest. Be... Okay. Uh, what, how, how do you see us in Christmas 2020? Us as the... the Humanity, um, yeah, the COVID-19 situation. What would be your idea? So, right, if it comes down to visualizing and really putting out there what you want to see, I mean, mm -hmm. my, my thing is... All, I hear people say all the time that this world we live in is a terrible place. Right. And those people, a lot of them watch the news a significant amount of the time. And when you watch the news before COVID-19, you see mm -hmm. a murder, you see a rape, you see all the mm -hmm. a fire, you see a death, a car accident. I mean, you would think that the world is a terrible place when you see this kind of stuff over and over again. Mm -hmm. However, my visualization and what I experience on a day to day basis is this world is actually a wonderful place. The people that you know in the day and I know, when we look at our family and we look at our friends and we look at our friends' friends, for the most part, a huge portion of those people are just really kind, loving, caring people who would have your back if you needed them. The problem is the news, think about this for a second. The news, how, how does the news how do they earn money? They earn money from ads. And how do they get more money for the ads? The more people that view the news, the more money they make. What yeah, that's a cycle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what they've determined is that good news does not sell. No one, for the most part... Want to hear it. <laughs> no, they don't. And i tell you what I think is the reason why they don't want to hear the... the um, why they want to hear the bad news... I think to make that, them feel better. Yes, that's exactly right. That's exactly <laughs> right. Because it, after you see that, you're like, man, my life isn't so bad after all. You know, like no. it's really not that bad. <laughs> it's not as bad as what just happened there. 
<laughs> but I really believe that the world is a much more loving and caring and kind place for most people. There's always going to be examples of people that aren't, and that's fine. But the majority of people out there are just good. So my vision is that that just keeps continuing to grow, that we all learn through doing this kind of work and by mm -hmm. spreading kindness to others, you know, we cause that ripple effect for this just to keep spreading. And I would love so much for the news to be limited um, in general, because I just feel like it, it has such an impact on most people. Um, but it doesn't matter. Like we can make that decision. We can decide. We have the power. The people have the power. It's not the media. It's not the news. It's us. We can push the button and turn the TV off and we can turn it on. We're the ones who have. So if we all as a group and we have that power decide, okay. you know, what we want in life, we can get that. So I think more love, more kindness. That's how I see it. I see people out uh, appreciating life more, um, being around people more and and just really having a, a new profound uh, gratitude and love for life um, now that there is that significant appreciation again for being able to be around people, being able to love people, being able to hug people. So I, that's where I see it. How about you? That's amazing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope it's going to get back to normal. I hope the wave never going to happen. Doesn't mean it won't happen, but that's my visualization. I prefer to see it's not gonna happen. We already have the wave, and I think we all learn from this first wave. And I don't think we are willing to get another wave. So wash hands, uh, self distance, do everything we could do, and get rid of this first wave and never have it again. Did you ever see? Did you ever see when? Um, did you ever start thinking about a friend? And you're like really have these thoughts about that friend and then all of a sudden you get a phone call from that friend and you're like i can't believe you just called I, I was just thinking about you has that ever happened to you kind of like the fact that you are thinking of that friend he happened to feel it and call right that's not an accident at all that actually is our thoughts are very powerful Hello? Um, and can you hear you can hear me? Is it breaking up? Can can you hear me okay? Oh, I was just gonna say our thoughts are unbelievably um, could you hear me? Uh, I yeah, think we now, have a glitch. Um Yeah, we're back. Now I can hear you. I think. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Okay. Okay, I try again. Sure. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Hello? No? Can you hear me? Looks like we may have hit a glitch. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Uh, try again one more time. Okay, we're live. Can you hear me? Any luck? No. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Can you hear me? No. Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Those are very powerful. And we and we explain that by right we we start thinking about um, a friend, 
and we're really thinking about them. And then all of a sudden the phone rings and there's the friend on the phone. And you're like, I cannot believe you just called. I was literally just thinking about you. That's mm-hmm. happened to me many times. I'm sure it's happened to you and I'm sure it's happened yes. to people. Yeah. yeah, that's not a mistake. Have you ever also seen, um, they've done experiments. So our thoughts and the things that we say are, are, are really powerful. And they've done experiments with, um, they'll have two separate plants, the exact mm-hmm. same plants, and they'll have one plant over here and another over here. And one plant, all they do is tell negative things to it. You're, you're ugly. You, you know, you're, you, we don't want you. You're terrible. You disgust me. And then mm-hmm. they have another plant that they say all these beautiful, kind, caring, loving things to. And they have done experiments and have shown conclusively that when that 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 the positive versus the negative has a huge impact the negative will literally cause the plant to like die and become all shriveled up and the other plant will be thriving and like look amazing (laughs) so our thoughts and what we say are super important so you know again by by us putting that out there into the Mm -hmm. universe it has a tremendous impact, more so than we probably even realize. That's impressive. Yeah. And where could my audience find you? So the best way to 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 reach out um, would be if you go on Facebook and mm-hmm. you go just type in Mindset Mastery mm-hmm. University, Mindset Mastery University, and then join the group. And awesome. in the group, uh, you'll get to see more stuff that I talk about. And mm-hmm. uh, it's just a great way to connect. Also, the website is www.mindsetmasteryuniversity.com. But I still think the best way is through the Facebook group. Um, and I'd love, yeah, I'd love the opportunity to help you grow and get what it is that you want in your life. Because I can promise you, that everything in life happens for a reason. So if you are watching this right now, there's a reason and purpose for you hearing me and seeing me and listening to the messages that you heard today. Otherwise, you wouldn't have heard them. The question is, are you going to pay attention to the message or are you just going to let it go? My suggestion is if you feel it and you re- it resonates with you, reach out, let's talk, and, um, and I can tell you all about the program. Um, and that's it. Yeah. So that's the best way to reach and out. Michael, if you don't mind, uh, if you could add it after below the video, so it's sure. easier to find. And also the fact that you add it, people could also click on your profile directly and contact you. That's a plus. That's why I like to ask you to do it. So if somebody wants to join you directly without passing by me, it's easier and it's open. We are all on Facebook right now. We are Facebook Live. And it's an easy way. And I'll be more than happy to welcome you also in this group where I am already. I joined and uh, I enjoyed it. And I watched one of your live already with your wife, which was uh, interesting. And I would recommend anyone who needs it and resonate with you, just join the group and we'll be more than welcome to have you there. Well, I appreciate that. And, you know, especially, like, I, 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 I think I have to like, digest the fact that you brought me on on your birthday <laughs> I'm on the birthday show this is this means so much to me so happy happy birthday i really we wish- do it's my first time i've never done a show on my birthday usually i'm like i do something else and this year was just the year i think it was just meant to be <laughs> it is meant to be and and um you know I, here's my wish for you i wish you a happy birthday i hope that this year is filled with peace happiness and lots of love that's what i wish for you thank you so much and thank you for being here the last word would be for you the the i'm the sorry last the last word is all yours the uh, last, the last word, word okay yeah. the last if word there is something Here's... you want to cover we haven't asked or something i haven't asked about maybe you want to cover it the final word is yours here's the last word <laughs> yeah so i'm talking to you who's watching right now I'm talking to you and I just want you to hear this message that you are an incredible person, that you can do anything that you want in life, anything. The only thing that ever stops you is those beliefs that we had from when we were younger. 
And I'm here to tell you that you are perfect exactly as you are. And you know why I say that? Because if it's true that each of us have a piece of the divine, whether you call it God, higher power, spirit, whatever it is, but if we, if, if, if we all have a piece of God inside of us, that means we are perfect. We are perfect beings. And um, you are perfect. And the key and goal will be to get you to see that light underneath the dirt. And we're going to shovel that dirt away. And we're going to get you to a place where you're going to just be even happier than you are right now and get the results that you want in your life because you can get them. There's nothing that's preventing you from getting them other than that BS, right? A belief system is BS. And that's exactly, you couldn't say it any better because that's what the belief system is. It's BS. And now we're going to get rid of the BS and we're going to bring in some really good stuff. And that's the case. So you can do it. I believe in you 100% and you have everything it takes to be the type of person that you want to be. Awesome. Thank you so much, Michael, for being here and joining me on my birthday. And I wish you all the best. And I hope to have you soon for your new book launch. And we're going to discuss about that. <laughs> I would love that. Happy, happy birthday. And I'm going to have a Thank piece you so of cake much. for you. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.